This week's episode of the award-winning, multiple award-winning Here For It podcast is brought to you by Lockdown. They won't let kills out. <laughs> he on lockdown. They won't let kills out. He on lockdown. They're never going to let kills out. If you are unfamiliar with the story, R. Kelly has finally been arrested again by the feds. And it looks like this sex trafficking charge is going to keep the girl down for the count this time. I'm absolutely here for it. Uh, it looks like uh, his followers will not be able to uh, let them let him out with their uh, kindergarten or uh, drug money or however else they were getting all these thousands of dollars to let him out. Um, I'm excited because there's one predator down and we have one predator left. Hashtag arrest that book. No shade, but can you move the tequila from off the edge of the table? <laughs> My fault. Fa- I'm like, I can't. Fa- I'll have no. Cl- the tequila one say sorry. <laughs> um, shout out to that Epstein guy that got arrested. What was his Jeffrey name? Jeffrey Epstein. They said they found a passport in his safe with a um, a address in Saudi Arabia. He had been indicted. Yeah, he's, charged or something. Yeah, he's. He was a flight risk, uh, also for sex trafficking, um, was what he got arrested for. But <clears throat> the reason that they didn't let him out, even though his team was like, girl, we'll give you all $77 million if y'all just put him in like this private prison in New York in his extravagant apartment that he's already bought. But that was also a ticket for him to just get on a plane somewhere and go somewhere else. So um, two predators are off the streets. And I'm excited about it. All right. We need this coming the series wrapped up. Hey, book, where you at? <clears throat> Get her the fuck out of here as well. Speaking of predators, I am the Superman <laughs> TA. Speaking of predators, are you a predator? I guess you're an AKA or something. So. Hold on. Listen, I'm here for it. We'll see. I am the Superman T H E E S U P A M A N, AKA the Lion Queen. A predator. Look at that. Look at that. Look, the, the wheels are turning. The okay. wheels are turning. <laughs> BKA cool. Candy's Hammer. Come on out. Uh, oh, that was weak. Uh, my name is Ronald Matters. Follow me on the internet at Ronald Matters and, of course, RonaldMatters.com. Thank you guys for listening to Here For It Podcast, a weekly dive into sexual health, mental uh-huh. health, and everything for black gay boys. Okay. Our icebreaker this week is Can Bottoms Take Tops Out to Dinner? <laughs> you have <some> difficulty. <laughs> what? <laughs> Can bottoms take tops out to dinner? Is chivalry dead? <laughs> Sometimes it is. <laughs> <laughs> bitch. And that, that's the dead of this relationship, bitch. So that means no. I'm just joking. Um, That don't make... I, I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Y'all just broke Ronald <laughs> Matter. <laughs> I'm like, yes, but I'm mature. So, you know, <laughs> LOL, I'm mature. Oh. So <laughs> I, I understand relationship and gender roles and... Heteronormativity it, I'm just more mature Than all that Oh Okay That makes you a cougar now <laughs> <laughs> I'm mature With my lying ass You a cougar <laughs> Lying ass <laughs> With my lying ass Lying ass <laughs> But Yeah I mean Yeah take trade out sometimes And Swipe And then Go home and let him swipe that cat What's going on Confirm. There's nothing wrong with that it was a popular question that it was going it. on in uh, social media this week about uh, gender roles and yeah. assignments and who can pay for what who and who pay should for pay for what. So that's why I figured it would be icebreaker. <laughs> I already know the answer, but like, the, the community needs to know the answer. The answer should and always should be yes. To you us. Both, you both should be able to take each other out for dinner, no matter who's fucking who on that evening. Because Karen Huger ain't... Um, Linda, she ain't paying for the first date. Real Housewives of Potomac. And she's loaded. <laughs> Let her tell it. <clears throat> Our word of the day this week is interfemoral. Interfemoral. There's like, how many syllables? Interfemoral. Oh, that's five syllables. Wow. And you use all your I use Oh, and I need to clean my nails. Wow. Wow. Okay. Interfemoral. Interfemoral. Uh, Interfemoral sex is thrusting between someone's thighs without penetration, which 
dates back to ancient Greeks who did not want to sully their partner in certain situations with penetrative sex. So that means just putting a little lube on your baby's thighs and going to town. Hoping and wishing you can get a little bit closer to that hole. But if you don't, just come on them thighs, come on that ass or whatever. It's um, a extremely safe way of practicing sex. There was this married couple um, on Facebook and the um, perceived top in the relationship was saying how his partner had been diagnosed with rectal cancer mm -hmm. and they just had a challenging um, nearly two year battle with overcoming rectal cancer and his partner. And I was like, I wonder how they had sex for two years. But I guess when you do a lifelong commitment to somebody, girl, if you can't get in that hole for two years, I guess you have to deal with that and start doing interfemoral. Interfemoral. So interfemoral also, if you break it down, means inside the femurs. Because so I can't, just, I can't get a gay divorce because he suffered from cancer. It's like, so wow, are you going to divorce him? I guess I better get into this interfemoral. Yeah. <laughs> get you some interfemoral sex. Interfemoral. I N T E F E M O R A L. Not I N D E P E N D E N C. For all my hood rats out there. Uh, we were supposed <clears> to take <throat> this shot before we no, started we recording. Mm -mm, no. Mm -mm, no. Oh, girl. She cheating. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for supporting this ghetto ass podcast. Um,. We appreciate you guys listening so much. If you would like to support this Ghetto Ass Podcast, please go to the very first link in our bio, which is our Patreon. It is never the first link. I just wish it is this fucking week. <laughs> I wish you would quit saying it. <laughs> there, for at least $1 a month, you can support this Ghetto Ass Gay Ass Podcast to continue going. Wow. And for up to $25 a month, you can be in our explicit Here For It Hive, oh. where you can get all kinds of goodies, bonuses, yeah, and be features. $10 content, $15 content. It'd be different. And access to the girls. Um, I would like to announce that we will be in New York City the weekend of August 24th. Beep, 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 beep. It's the weekend of August 23rd, which is the first day of Virgo. <laughs> Get it right. Friday, August 23rd, the first day of Virgo. The Queen's birthday. Mm -hmm. So, I'm really excited for my birthday weekend and to be in New York City. Yeah. And so, again, if you would like to support this podcast, come out and see us. We will be at uh, Boxers in Hell's Kitchen uh -huh. at 5 p.m. We will be serving shots oh. to the first 20 of you guys that show up. Oh. Um, we want to give out some free merch. We oh. want you guys to come out and see us, shake hands, kiss babies, suck dicks if you have to. All of those things. Uh, Boxers, Hell's Kitchen, August 24th, 5 p.m. Pull up. Um, I'm scared, excited, I'm nervous Just as a woman, you know Okay I need a man to take control Wow um, Call LC. But <laughs> I'm scared to pay for the first date So <laughs> what does my relationship success look like? Wow Well, our affirmation right <laughs> will be directly for you Uplift uh, me, thank you Uh huh. <clears throat> our affirmation this week is Recognize your godhood There is something about you that is magnetic that attracts people and also makes people dislike the light that's, that they see in you. Become the trend, become the culture instead of following them. Be empowered, seductive, and real. Love yourself so much that it doesn't matter if you're having an ugly day that others will still see your power regardless of whether you are wearing your best drag or looking pedestrian and homeless. Read that back to yourself on um, a low day, any day, that you don't feel like you are who you really are or who you who you should be. Um, if you are not walking in your purpose and walking in um, the steps that God has ordered for you, then you should be. And don't waste time not walking in those steps. That is our affirmation this week. In tepid topics this week. I know you're about to go through all this. <laughs> Shout out to Memphis. The headline says, Tennessee Police Department warns of meth gators 
hyped up off of toilet flush drugs. <laughs> and I'm like, he up here talking about godhood and being uplifting and empowering. And I'm over here reading about alligators on meth from down in Memphis because the girls is flushing meth down the toilet. We're on two different podcasts currently. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Flush your meth down the toilet and the alligators is get an uh, alligator coming up on me on meth. <clears throat> Back to you in the newsroom. <laughs> Last week, um, we talked about the insane amount of fighting going on again, unfortunately. Um, so I want to point out a result of our negligence as a community to keep one of the few black gay things that we have left here in the DMV area. Uh, if you are here in the DMV area, DC, Maryland, Virginia, you know exactly what I'm talking about. <clears throat> we previously had Twilight Tuesdays, which was um, a place in the middle of the week on Tuesdays for us to go hang out by the pool because, you know, we wasn't getting in the pool. A couple of girls got in the pool sometimes when I went um, to drink, congregate, uh, find your next baby daddy if you're looking for Come him on. on Tuesday. Update my jack because I'm in a new area. That's what I be doing. All of the above. You had <laughs> something to do on Tuesdays because there was nothing to do in this whole area on Tuesdays but this. And now it is gone. It is gone because we as a community have been negligent in containing and stopping these fights that continue to happen in places where oftentimes we ain't welcome. We're not welcome in a lot of these spaces. If you go to the area that Twilight Tuesdays has on a Wednesday, a Thursday, or a Friday, that same beautiful rooftop area with the pool is white most of the time. White and definitely straight. We got one goddamn night of the week and we didn't know how to fucking act. We didn't know how to police or contain ourselves. ourselves. Because, again, I'm not blaming the establishment. It was ourselves. Not even just the people that were fighting. The people that were recording fights. People that had the opportunity to de-escalate the fights and did not. It is on us. And so now we have one less week and one less space to be in. And it is our fault. Um... When when we look at history and we want to talk about, you know, this black gay space is gone and this black gay space is gone and this black gay space is gone. There are so many black gay spaces that we talk about that are gone because of gentrification. Um, because maybe the business just didn't have the money to continue to be open. And now we have spaces now that are going to be close to us because we can contain our goddamn selves and it's a, uh-huh. it's a shame it's a shame and i'm not saying that to shame anyone i'm saying that to the spot give, give our give our give our community something where we should be talking about de-escalating these situations again the spots we got left child i i am not someone that's speaking from a, a high position of authority of i have never been in a fight before I'm just saying <laughs> that's, Ooh, that's laughable to me, right? <laughs> not sitting next to you. <laughs> so I'm not speaking from that position. I'm just saying that we can do better, and we have to do better because it's going to continue to limit the space, the spaces that we are, amen, and that are accessible to us. So I don't got no colorful commentary on that. It sounds well said. Uh, if that bitch fucked your man, can you fight her at your house and just call the police down in Temple Hills or Capitol okay. Heights? Can you fight her in the parking lot? Or uh, somewhere else, can y'all fight on the side of the expressway? Just girl, protect the, the spots we got left. Okay, for everybody else. Because even if you ain't going back because you got your ass whooped there, that's fine. <laughs> I want to go back on next Tuesday. Yeah. They they said the venue demanded that they cancel the whole season of the damn part. I was like, wow. Yeah, they they, they canceled so, Hot Girl Summer. They messed it up that bad. Yeah, that the venue say, uh, uh-uh, uh, y'all not welcome back here. Uh, uh-uh, uh. And uh-uh. it's it's not the only venue that's thinking and doing similar actions. Well, unfortunately, shout out to Brixton uh-uh. and Nellie's and Ooh, yeah. Okay. Um, next DC is acting up. Wow, oh, Hot Girl Summer going left. <laughs> Candy Girl, huh? 
You are my world. You're so sweet. You can't be beat. Is that the next line? Is that a Jackson Five song? Because it sounds like it's. And you know I don't do Michael Jackson. Nothing Michael Jackson. Girl, you thanks. don't do a lot of people. So that's that. what. Ch- um. Next, I small. wanted to make sure that we did our polls review for all of you because it was. An amazing episode, probably one of the best episodes of Pose that I've seen. Probably, it, I, I would welcome an argument. It was based about, on a true story. Definitely based on a true story. Shout out to uh, Venus Extravaganza, um, rest in power, who actually got her real life story portrayed on TV. An Oscar, not an Oscar, an Emmy Award, Oscar Award nominated show. Okay, Emmy Award nominated show. Um, and I thought that we should definitely break it down because probably some of y'all have been waiting for us to break it down. Oh, so they was, yeah. they definitely was, definitely. So first and foremost, before I get to the real heavy and dark shit, because it's a lot of heavy and dark shit in this last episode of Post, I think we are giving too much credit to Madonna for um, Vogue and. For the impact that Vogue had on the time period that was going on in Pose. Okay. Um, I recognize that she was a quote-unquote pioneer. But she was a pioneer in um, taking other people's things and putting it on mainstream. Uh, 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 so, I'm just I'm trying to figure out... like. Why we're giving her so much credit for Mm -hmm. stuff that was already ours. Um, She didn't give queer people of color credit when Vogue came out. There was like one or two of them in the video. Everybody else was white like her. So I'm trying to figure out why we're giving Madonna so much credit and so much clout for the Vogue era. Because she did a video and a song stealing stuff that she saw from queer people of color. So that's my first note, and I, and that's the light one. <laughs> um, Pray Tell is being portrayed as a bully. So he's been having um, commentary for Candy as long as the show has been going on. He's always had negative thing, negative thing, negative thing. Perceived negative. Thing. negative. Yes. Again, we'll wait till we get to the Because the girl give you a critique just don't mean it's negative. If the girls be like, girl... You dress ugly. You might be dressing ugly, ma'am. It's not a negative critique. You just dress ugly. You just perceiving it as negative because in a place in your life, girl, that's all I can afford. Yes. And it's ugly to <laughs> other people. <laughs> you can't laugh and you combating your own point. I'm not I, I was just asking a question, is pray tell a bully? Because he's done this uh to one specific girl. Um, is it colorist? Maybe not because he gives Electra praises and Electra is similarly dark skinned. Um, he also read Electra for that um using her voice to be down to the church for the um demonstration. He also read so Electra he- for trying to come in here and introduce her new um house house family. when it went her segment on the schedule. Um so <laughs> not it's pray to tell a bully. right now. Is is pray tell a bully? I think to a, to an extent the sarcasm that it takes to um, one be friendly with all the girls, judge the competition fairly, and for all these gays to understand that you are judging the competition fairly, you have to have a little wit, a little sarcasm. You have to give a read to this family. You have to give a read to the um, house of Darion. You have to give a read to all the girls equally. But is he though? Because when Evangelista come up. Ain't no reads, and he going to the evangelista house afterwards to have drinks. He read her for her baby drag, which is why she was inspired to come up. But that was before it was even a house of evangelista. But he was he was he was reading. He I mean, so like it's not like him reading is a new activity. No, um, he wasn't just singling Candy. Out. Candy's the only girl he's ever read in his career. He reads all the girls. He's been reading the girls for decades. Okay. Um, is the ball scene um? Able to house intersectionality So At one point in this last episode um, All of the MCs of the, the Ball community got together and was talking About 
um, Candy wanting to introduce this lip lip sync category, uh -huh. and they were all like, "Girl, no." If you are legendary Electra, then we might consider it. But girl, you are the legendary <laughs> Candy. So um. R.I.P. <laughs> um, spoiler alert: Obviously, if you have not seen this last episode, um, so I th I thought that it was a good depiction of um, what the intersectionality in the LGBT spectrum looks like right it's now. What is intersectionality? Inter it's different sections where sections meet. Okay. Oh, yes, I know meet. Inter uh, but what does that have to do with what you just discussed? So Compare th here is a trans woman okay. asking to be visible mm -hmm. um, in a LGBT friendly she space. She likes the lips in category and she wants the lips and in And she wants visibility. And here we are, the gays, just the black gays, not the trans, mm -hmm. saying, no, girl, you stay over there in that corner. You are not allowed to be in this space like this. I think you're making it more trans than you're making it about the whole category as a whole. I mean, like, just as one trans woman, okay, so are she saying, like, she has the, the support of hips behind her for the trans voice? And she's the spokesperson for the their um, attempt at making moves, or she's speaking solely as Candy when she comes to my brunch, and then she wants to interrupt and, and says that she wants a lip sync category. Because all I saw was the solo person. I didn't see her representing the entire trans community. I just saw it as this one girl really likes the trans category, and she wants us to seriously consider it. I appreciate her efforts, definitely, because... There still end up being a lip sync category. Spoiler alert. But, you know, uh, but I don't, I didn't see her representing the entire trans community asking to be heard. She was just candy girl who likes the trans. I mean, the lip sync thought. Yeah, but this category, like, is tailor made for trans. Is it? A lip sync so, category? So gay people can't participate? I, I don't know. No, well, every, well, obviously, gay people are participating in every category of the ball uh -huh. at this point. But this one specific one was something that was uh, for up and coming trans girls and drag queens. It was not presented that way in in my view. In my view of the episode, it was not presented that way. It was just presented as Candy Girl was excited about a category. No, yeah, okay. Historically, at the time, the only places that you could do a lip sync was if you were at a drag show. Okay. And so she was asking for the things that were comfortable for trans women and drag queens to be brought to the ball. Okay. So that is the intersection. The crossing okay. of streets. Meaning okay. it's, this is not just gay. This is trans and gay. This is bi and gay. This, these are all the other things. The, the acronyms. Um, and... I, th I thought that it was very telling of where we are today when we talk about um, Black Lives Matter, but mm -hmm. not Black Gay Lives gay Matter, lives, black, not Black Trans Lives Matter, not Black Bi Lives mm -hmm. Matter, blah, 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 go on and on. Um, those intersections, we still don't recognize because we don't want to meet at those same intersections. Okay. Um, so I thought it was a, a, an important conversation, but obviously a whole bunch more shit happened in the episode. Ooh, child. Um, a wrinkle in time. <laughs> yes. Uh, Blanca. Huh? Um, after discovering that uh, Candy has died in the episode, I thought Blanca said What's something. What's her name? Lulu? Lola? What was her name? Lulu. Lulu. Lulu came up. Girl, I can't find my sis. I was like, girl. Hold let, on. Uh, let Superman not text me in 24 hours. He ain't text me in a meme. Girl, lit. I'm Lulu. Superman ain't texted me, tagged me, called me. Girl, where is Anthony Superman? Hold, that? hold on to get, those words. Get out that coochie and text me back. Um, Blanca said something that I thought was very real and timely and useful. Um, Blanca said she may not have been in our house, but she's still our sister. Yeah, and it was extremely powerful. Um, and again, speaks to intersectionality of, um. We may have our disagreements, but she over in that got, other house. But it us. don't matter. And so that you saw them uh, fall back into that same dynamic of Electra, Electra being the mother, um, Blanca being 
the older sister, the co-founder, Lulu <laughs> being a younger sister, and Candy Bubbly being a younger, and Candy being a younger sister, and legendary for <laughs> bullshit, <laughs> all of the above. <laughs> but but they folded back into that same family dynamic, which uh-huh. is extremely important. In, the original house, well, right? They were that. That's the, the house of abundance. House. And so, even though they were all technically house mothers of something else, mm-hmm. they folded back into the old. Um, Family dynamic of Electra being the mother and trying to organize things, Blanca being the older sister and trying to keep everything together, Lulu being the middle child falling apart, <laughs> and now Candy is the one that's gone. The baby. You're right. We gotta go get her some antibiotics. She on the couch. You could have just called me. I could have came and got you some antibiotics, Candy. But I wanted to be an adult woman. Well, it was, I, so it was she needed more than antibiotics, unfortunately, Uh-oh. because uh, like we said at the top of the show, the Episode mirrored um, a death that happened in Paris's burning from uh, Venus Extravaganza, who was a trans girl that was turning tricks like Candy was uh, to pay the bills, keep the lights on, eat or whatever. Slim fast and popcorn. Whatever. I'm running what, a house. Whatever. Whatever the eat. reasons, she had to, um, and she succumbed to violence of someone that has been unidentified. Um, the police did not search for. Nope. And the crime is still Untold. unadjudicated. Oh, I like that word. And the the depiction of it broke me so much when I saw it because I knew exactly what they were going for and I knew exactly the story that they were telling. And I said out loud, I don't want to see her body. And then they showed me her goddamn body. I want to say, yeah, the body was coming. <sighs> um, so I cried like a baby, of course. Mm. Um, was you with trade or was you by yourself? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's like trade, come over here. Pose got me in shambles. And then the visuals of trans girls holding and consoling each other oh, in the midst of it was Amen. beautiful because it also happens in real life. Right here when, in DC, last week, we and the week. Oh, child. Right in the last couple weeks, and that also DC girl, is. I ran out of Kleenex. <laughs> Um, and so it, it was realistic in the fact of trans women and or trans men only find solace within themselves and within their own community because we, the G in the LGBT and the B and the B and the L's, I don't know where y'all be at sometimes, no shade, um, don't attend to our own community and pretend that when that shit happens, to one of our brothers or sisters in the community, oh girl, well that's not my problem. Oh well, girl, I got something else to do, and oh girl, that I don't align with my schedule. And so, the trans people end up having to be the ones to pick up their own pieces and to console one another all at the same time. And so, uh, I was very grateful to see that in the show because that's very realistic uh, to this day. That continues to happen, unfortunately, and I empower and hope that. Uh, more of the other members of the community, when something happens to one of us, will will act as if it has happened to all of us. Um, I was happy to see Sandra Bernhardt being a real Nurse white out. Al- yeah, Nurse, give them the body. And he was like, "Look, so I'm not risking my job over giving these gay girls no body." And she was like, "Well, I put my name on it, Nurse Jackie." <laughs> He was like, all right, well, you Nurse Jackie. Nurse Jackie signed off on the body. (laughs) I was happy to see her being a real accomplice. Because, again, like I've said on this show before, I'm not here for your fake allyship. I want condolences, thoughts, and prayers, and blah, blah, blah. Where are you going to be in the fight? Are you going to come down here and put your name on the line? Are you going to come down here and get the body? Are you going to come down here and say something or put your reputation on the line? If you're not, then hold it. All that fake shit, leave that shit on the playground. And Sandra Barnhart's character actually was a real accomplice. She went down and did the actual work that we need white accomplices to do. She went down and said, okay, well, there's a problem. I know that me being a... Nurse Jackie. A white professional woman is going to get me further than these black trans women Mm. will ever get in getting this body to the, to the places home. that it should be. And shout and out to she, the funeral home director. Yeah. So I was happy to see that because that's, that's again, that's the example of what um, accomplice, a, you say? Being an accomplice looks like. Because she, be, she could go to jail for that. That's a crime. Signing off on a body? 
She could lose her license <laughs> for that. Again, an ally would be like, well, I'm sending thoughts and prayers. I hope y'all girls get it together. Mm-hmm. Well, I gave y'all the number to the morgue. <laughs> That's Bitch, what, I need more than just the number. I need, I need to come down complex. here. I need, I need to come complex. down here. I need you to put your whiteness in front of my transness, my gayness, my bi-ness. I need you to be a shield, a human shield that your whiteness will protect you from. Or well, at least Act Up New York will stand behind you because she went to all the meetings and knew all the girls. Um. So cheers to the trans women who don't get to have a funeral like mm. Candy. Mm. Um, as we saw in the episode, Candy got a really nice funeral uh, for free. F- somehow they were able to afford the casket. Somehow they were able to afford the arrangements. Um, the girls had refreshments that other girls were still in. Apparently, um, we're gonna get to that. Um, but I wanted to make sure that we talked about the trans people that don't get the arrangements that Candy got, unfortunately, Uh-oh. because that is. Great for TV, but in real life, there are trans people who go unclaimed, who don't have a funeral, who don't have anybody that will fight for their body and will either be cremated or donated to science. So imagine nobody coming to pick you up and you did. That's really only a short window of time like two weeks maximum you got to be cremated or you got to be something they got to make a decision on what to do and money influences a lot yeah and so and they will donate your body to science as well if you have viable organs Mm -hmm. and also if you are differently sexed Mm -hmm. so um a trans person stands a lot more risk of being donated to science because coverage we need more coverage because you are different mm. And so we need to look at you After you you die Just For research purposes Blah 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 That's a whole nother rabbit hole Anyway um, So definitely keep in mind uh, Again the funeral scene was great It was beautiful But keep in mind the girls That don't get an opportunity To have the funeral That Candy got um, With all the colors And orientations And the whole spectrum behind her Because she had everybody And Lulu's um, accessories <laughs> Lulu acting a damn fool. You is my homegirl. Down here in my casket acting up. Yes. Expect the same. <laughs> um, <laughs> Billy Porter put on, put on a fucking show. Now nominated for an Emmy, Billy Porter. And nominated for his own solo drama in a series actor oh, category. Um, According to shit illiteracy. <laughs> wow. Uh, <laughs> the, he was obviously the standout from the episode for me. Um, Angel stood out. I, I liked her emotional range that she went down um, in knowing Candy as just one of her sisters before and then being in a different house and knowing her struggle mm-hmm. of being on the piers and working with Johns and stuff like that. So I loved her range, but Billy Porter stole the fucking show. He really did. Um, I, I liked, like again, I liked how Angel was a real example of survivor's remorse. Uh, if you don't know what survivor's remorse is, please Google it. Um, she she had the feeling of it could have been me, and it should have been me. Come or, on, if it wasn't for the blood. Yeah, that's a gospel song. Come on out, well, mm. girl. We weren't going there. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> but that survivor's remorse is a real thing uh, that happens to a lot of people in different situations where um, they know that they easily could have been the person that actually died, mm. or the person that actually did uh, get shot, or was in that car accident. Or whatever the case was. And Angel was definitely feeling survivor's remorse because she was in the same peers, working the same peers, doing the same things that Candy was doing. Okay. She was fucking white men for money. And then maybe Who was the white man? <laughs> Angel? The first remember that was a joke. Okay. Um Who had been saying that? if you have never been to a black funeral, this was definitely a black funeral to watch. Because they had the ups, it the downs, the funny parts, the emotional baggage from the mother and the father. Ooh. 
not accepting her and then kind of accepting her and then still uh, misgendering her as a he even at her funeral like girl how can you not have a heart in front of my body right here in front of me still the, I don't understand it's not for you to understand just love me through it the ghost of candy got all of them together Ooh. Uh, so during the funeral she became a ghost and was like having these last words with everyone um, it got me together One of the most touching ones was when she was with Lulu and Lulu was having, you know, this kiki conversation with her about the good and the bad times that they've had. And Lulu went to light her cigarette. And by the time she turned back around, Candy wasn't there. Tears fell from my face from there on out because people don't realize how real that is. You take you take advantage of the time that you have until you don't have that time no more. And Lulu at that moment didn't have the time no more to sit and kiki with her girl like she thought she did. She thought she could just light a cigarette, turn around and continue to kiki, but her girl ain't there no more. And she realized I mismanaged my time. And um, she could have Spent more time with her sister, building her sister up instead of tearing her sister down. And that was the biggest takeaway I got from that. I don't have any colorful comments. I mean, like, that, look, man, they ended it on the uh, Stephanie Mills, brought on around, never knew a love like this. Um, Anita Baker gave them a shout out on the Twitter and the Instagram, so she endorsed it. And I was just like, pose, tune in next week. All right. So which y'all what the fuck what 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 the f- <laughs> Give them their things, okay? Give them their fucking things. Oscars, Emmys, um, SAG Awards. What are what are they doing? Daytime, nighttime. What's the theme? Category is post. Nominated and winning. <laughs> That's what the category should Playing be. The victory so um I'm still Candy Sammer. And um, I I wish that Candy had her hammer and all her things. I empower all sex workers to take weapons to your dates. There's nothing wrong with that. Oh, y'all saw T.S. Medicine. She had the bag. She had the she had the two bats. She had the little thing that she the little Mm. gun that she keep under her titty. Mace, (laughs) mace in the purse, and a taser. (laughs) I like. Take take weapons to these (laughs) dates because you never know. He didn't say they wouldn't prosper. They just said they wouldn't form. No, he just said they wouldn't form. He said they wouldn't prosper. There you go. Good job. Hey, man, I have to reverse the camera. <laughs> <clears throat> mm-hmm. um, prep is here to stay. 500% increase? 500% uh, is the amount that prep usage has risen in the United States of America. A report on CNN has said uh, the use of the daily pill to prevent HIV infection has rose 500% between 240 uh, between 2014 and 2017, um, as reported by the CDC as well. Of course. More than a third of people at risk of HIV infection are now protected with the medication, which is more than 90% effective. Come on. Almost a all, almost all demographic groups reported increased use of the pill, um, but use remained low in black, Hispanic, and Latino men who have sex with men. Because they're not making it that, affordable to us. No. It's not about it's not just about affordability. It's about access and information. Hey Amen. We are still talking about the stigma in the black and Hispanic and other colored communities. The stigma of, well, you on prep, so you a slut. We're still there. And all of these other communities are advancing and not talking about that shit no more and just getting on the drugs so they don't get HIV. And I know we had the conversation earlier about someone saying that we were, uh, what were we doing? Fear mongering. We were fear mongering. Fear mongering. We were fear mongering uh, HIV positive people. No. I am absolutely here for HIV positive people. But I know that those same HIV positive people. Had these measures been more advertised, uh, they were more informed about these measures, 
they would have taken these measures than taking than taking the uh, chance or the opportunity to have become HIV positive. There's nothing wrong with being HIV positive. Not at all. But I want the numbers of us dying from HIV and or AIDS complications to go down because they're continuing they're continuing to go up. Where in other communities they are going down because they're not talking about the same stupid shit of oh well if you on prep girl you a slut. They're not talking about that shit. They're just taking the goddamn prep and doing and going about their life. And meanwhile, the white girls sitting in their laboratories and in their Excel, they had a spreadsheet saying, "Okay, well, girl, twenty five thousand more black people. Okay, so what's the next? What's the next race on the um, Excel spreadsheet?" And it's just the people who are not in our communities every day. Just oh, well, this is the numbers on the spreadsheet. So let's just publish those numbers on the spreadsheet. Let them make headlines. So I mean. I have literally held people in my arms after they found out about their HIV diagnosis and they just didn't have enough information and um, what they had heard about it, but they didn't really know if they could trust it and blah, blah, blah. I'm out. I'm literally out here. People are calling, Ronald, I just left the clinic and I got a new diagnosis. I'm like, you're calling me on Facebook Messenger? I'm just glad that Facebook Messenger allow- Those are the times when you don't like, oh, Facebook Messenger allows people to call me. But, oh, girl, okay, I'm just glad that Facebook Messenger allows people to call me because they know that I use all of my platforms to discuss all of the things that matter to black gay men. And so, scaremongering, here to help people. DM me if you need me to connect you to resources. I say it every single time. If you need help with a resource, DM me and I will use my platform and I would call, text, and tweet at the Superman to him to use his network because he know all the girls too. And we're going to help you get the services. It's not about scaring you into not catching HIV. Sh- shit happens. Y'all shit on dick all the time. And we talk about that as well. So can we scare yeah. y'all into not shitting on dick? Because that ain't work. <laughs> <laughs> that definitely ain't work. I'm tired uh-huh. of my top friends calling me with the stories. Facebook Messenger don't need to allow them to call me when it's the topic. <laughs> so, so the the point of the matter is, okay, prep is not going anywhere. New from Beyonce spirit. I need to pause this podcast. No, you don't. <laughs> last time, you, last time you did that, you got in a car accident. <laughs> oh, I did get it. Oh, I can't pause it. Okay, I'm pausing it. Um. So again, to reiterate, um, we're not just. Sexual health is next. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> I got an iPad, bitch. <laughs> to reiterate, we are we are not um, shaming anyone that has HIV. We are trying to reduce the numbers of infected people, and we're trying to reduce the numbers of people that are dying of complications of HIV and or AIDS. In Jesus' name, Amen. And that's it. The, that's period. it. Big dot. That's it. Lashana Lynch has been cast in the new 007. As the next she 007. She is beautiful. She is beautiful. Uh, if you don't don't know who Lashana Lynch is, Lashana Lynch was um, um, Monica Rambeau in Captain Marvel mm. that came out a couple months that ago. That bad wig on. With the bad wig Jesus on. Jesus well. Beautiful, dark-skinned queen. Bad wig in that movie. Hopefully. But with her natural... I hope they allow her to be natural hair fish with a good lash. Now, she all the pictures that were announcing that she was rumored to be the 007... I'm like, yes, this hairstyle, just throw me a good lash and put a little, a good um, dot of blush on the cheeks. Natural beauty. Yeah. <laughs> what um, are y'all doing? I'm excited to see it. It sent white fanboys into a full tailspin. Uh, I mean, we just casted Ariel. So, you know, they already. Well, shit, here you go to 007 then, girl. <laughs> Since y'all are. It just sent white fanboys into a full tailspin on Twitter. Um, I'm absolutely here for that as I'm well. here for that as well <laughs> uh, The report said that the role would be Race bended because the main 007 was retired uh, If you are following in Any of the 007 movies um, But the new one is Tasked to bring the old Regular white ugly one Out of retirement That ain't what the, the deadline said Did Hollywood report Here, here for a podcast is <laughs> I'm like what's your story <laughs> Here for a podcast is reporting live. <laughs> the old dead ugly. I'm like, wow. Yeah. Uh, Hollywood reporter didn't say all that. Did no. They? Here, here for a podcast reported that. <laughs> um. <laughs> so, 
The white fanboys are mad that 007 is going to be a black woman for probably the first five to ten minutes of this movie. Because she's not going to be 007 when she brings him back. Mm-hmm. She's going to bring him back and he's going to come out of retirement and be like, oh, girl, I guess I got to shoot somebody. Sure. I'm going to run around and jump on trains and uh, find a white bitch. That's what he's going to do. That's what 007 Sam always Smith's does. Gonna sing the, um... For 25 fucking movies, that's what he always does. For the first five minutes of this movie, there's going to be a black woman. Saving the white man. 007 saving the white man, and they can't deal. I don't even know what the movies are about. I'm just glad. <laughs> because look, Scar, Scar Joe <laughs> out here trying to. Oh. I should be able to play a tree. Well, girl, go play a tree. <laughs> Please get out my fucking face. <laughs> Scarlett Joe head something. I should be able to play a tree if I want to. Okay, okay, and nobody's stopping you, ma'am. <laughs> Go produce that. <laughs> Executive produce it. Put your own. <laughs> put your put your Wells Fargo behind that. Put your whatever credit union you with. Finance it under them. <laughs> I will say now, any movie that Scarlett Johansson is in, I am um, not, not paying. <laughs> I am not paying any of my dollars for. If it is an Avengers movie that I absolutely have to see, well, I, will, I mean, I will I will pay for the black movie that is playing right now, <laughs> and then go and see the Avengers. The money will go towards the black movie, something that has a black starring lead or an LGBT star. I will pay the money to go see that, and then when I walk past the, little, on into the other. I'm gonna go to the <laughs> Avengers movie because they're not getting no more money from me if they're gonna support that bullshit. We already read her ass last week. About talking about she should be able to play um, a masculine trans man. Where, girl? How? You don't even demonstrate the ability to play a regular blonde white girl. And that's who you already are. You don't demonstrate the ability to do that. So how the fuck are you going to play a trans masculine man? And so now that production of that film has been put on hold. And I'm just like, y'all let Scar Joe fuck This story needs to be told. Scar Joe ain't going to tell it. And... Thank God for Jesus. And definitely wasn't going to tell it effectively. <laughs> so, woo! <sighs> Moving on to other garbage. Chalet. Tennessee governor has signed a proclamation honoring the early KKK leader. Um, what's his name? Um, Willie Bedford. Yes. Willie? Nathan Bedford sure. Forrest Day. I don't even know. <laughs> so, last year, we were taking down Confederate stat- statues left Took and right. Took the one down in Memphis. Everywhere took his ass statues down. that should have been taken down long ago. Build a Confederate park, put all those statues in one place, and let the people that want to go see that go see that. It don't need to be all over Alabama, girl. The education rates already low. They not educated on the monuments, so go put all the Confederate stuff and all those people who believe in that heritage in one place and let it go be celebrated. Because right now, we're or I can go over there and spit on our nerves. Governor Bill Lee um, signed a proclamation Saturday uh, for Nathan Bedford Forrest Day in honor in honor of the Confederate Army General who was a slave trader, a famous slave trader, uh-huh. a humongous slave trader, one of the biggest slave traders uh-huh. in Tennessee history, uh-huh. um, and an early member and leader of the KKK. Do I go or do you go? Or? Me. Um, <laughs> the fact that. White politicians in 2019 have the license or feel like they have the license to still do shit like this Mm -hmm. is abhorrent. I can't believe that we are in a country after landmark achievements where we are still honoring enemies. Anyone that was on the other side Mm -hmm. of the Union, a.k.a. the Confederate, they're an enemy. Uh Uh-huh. We don't honor our Vietnamese generals that were killing people in Vietnam. A lot of we don't do that. Chinese in the South, uh-huh. And Asians in the South. Am we I? don't do that. Uh-huh. So, um, I find it just odd how white people still cling to this part of history and want to commemorate days after enemies of the state. I need my phone. I, I need to look up the law. Um... <laughs> Mr. Bedford Forrest was an enemy of the state. He was someone that was actually trying to circumvent laws and trying to take this country over. He was 
guilty of treason. So these are just the laws that we have on the books today. I'm not even going to cover the racism. I'm not even going to cover, you know, how illegal it was or should have been to have slaves. That's a just a different topic. But he was a treasonous traitor. And for the governor of Tennessee to feel like he should commemorate a treasonous traitor with a day of remembrance is absolutely trash. I'm not here for it. It should be rescinded. This governor should be recalled because he should not speak the pe- speak for the people of Tennessee because the people of Memphis wouldn't stand We're a for blue that. Blue city in a red state. Woo. A lot of people in Nashville wouldn't stand for that, and I don't stand for it now. There is a law um, in Tennessee where the governor has to sign it into law every year. He has to uh, he has to sign the honoring of the day or whatever it is, and so uh, it's not that he did or didn't want to. It's law in the state of Tennessee that he signed the proclamation honoring Bedford Forest every year. He had to, and so the law has to be overturned for him to not. But also. He said nothing and did nothing before it was presented. I mean, like, even if the council or the board or the whatever, he didn't say, like, y'all, in three months, I'm going to have to sign Bedford Forest Day into again, and I really don't want to do this. Can y'all just send this to a vote right quick? And, like, he didn't put nothing on the upcoming meeting agenda or nothing. He just Nothing was on the docket. (laughs) The docket was had no... And so, um... Yeah, so I don't really. Tr- and now he's saying that oh well, we I'm gonna work to overturn the law that says I have to sign this proclamation every year. Where, where you was on actual Christmas Day? And don't be talking about my Christmas gonna be in February. My Christmas Day is now, so it's bit bit for Forest Day now. Don't talk about oh three days later. Oh well, you know I'm gonna make it right three months from now. Make it right on the day I wouldn't need to be fucking made right, nigga. Don't hit me up on February 15th because I'm not um, celebrating National Side Peace Day. Oh, wow. Make this shit right on Nelson Bedford, Nathan Bedford Forest Day. This shit needs to be reneged. No shade. And that's on period. Or whatever the girls would be saying. I'm not cool anymore. You are old. <laughs> you are very old. <laughs> um, and last but not least, definitely arrest Ed Buck. Um, if you have not listened to our, our first episode of all, we last got R. Kelly this week. I was like, wow, I just know if they're getting the black man, the white man is next. But then they're like, well, you can't say that, Ronald. You know, like everybody has their own day, like Nathan, B- whatever his name is. So R. Kelly's having his day. Ed Book is going to get his day. And we will proclamate that one. I'm going to proclamate that one. <laughs> I'm definitely going to proclamate that one. Is proclamate a word? I don't know if proclamate is the word. Conversate is the word. We might as well make proclamate a word. <laughs> Flute out was a word that y'all let fly. So shit, proclamate is a word now. Proclamate is a word. We're going to proclamate a rest of book day. Yes. And we will have a party. Come on out. And we'll send a shirt to somebody. <laughs> Literally. Um, hashtag arrest that book. That's all that we have in tepid topics this week. What is going on in social studies? And we're going to talk about your brain. Oh, girl. I give good brain. The hypothalamus? Hypothalamus, yes. <laughs> that kind of brain. Yeah. I give that brain, too, as well. Um, is the little smaller area of, of the brain. It's about the size of an almond. Some of the websites said it was the size of a pea. So I was like, I guess it depends on if you went to college. Because uh, I've seen some big almonds, but if it's the size of a pea, then they went to Memphis City Schools. More than likely. <laughs> um, it controls the pituitary glands mm-hmm. and regulates many of the body's metabolic... Met- metabolic? Oh, there we go. Metabolic processes such as emotions, behaviors, memory, hunger, thirst, circadian rhythms, mm-hmm. libido... Childbirth and body temperature. So if your hypothalamus acting up, then that means your pituitary gland is gonna be acting up, which means your body just gonna be haywire. <sighs> Jesus wept. 
And Bill, Dr. George Bailey reported um, recently that um, high fat diets disrupt the brain and promote depression due to suppressed hypothalamic signaling. So when I'm depressed, I'm like, I'm going to get some ice cream. I need to go to Auntie Annie's and get the pretzel dog. I love the Auntie Annie pretzel dogs. The pretzel dogs are so good. Mm. Is this is a blanket. This is a pig in a blanket. Mm, yes. So those have, have I'm depressed. I'm I'm thinking I should go get something to make me feel better. When uh, actually, child, I'm, I got blockages. Yeah. And I'm depressed, and child, my hypothalamus is acting up. So what you should do. Or can do, because what you should do is uh, between you and your God. Um, include supplements. The number one thing that's been recommended um, is to add a fish oil pill, the omega-3 fatty acids. And if you suffer from um, inflammation like I do, inflammation in the body actually affects your brain. According to the Psychiatric Times, it says your brain's neuro circuits and neurotransmitter systems may be affected, which impacts behavior. And I talked about behavior in one of those things in the comment, the body temperature and the memory and the emotions. So if you, uh, I have, infl- I have like, why do I have inflammation at child everywhere basically? <laughs> uh, <laughs> so my behavior be acting up because I'm inflamed and my brain neuro circuits is acting up. Um, sure, Jim. <laughs> I'm sure. Other supplements, the number one supplement in the world that I've been seeing on the low, I'm not saying this publicly, but as it relates to um, depression in You're your brain. You're not saying this publicly, but saying it publicly? <laughs> okay. You were just supposed to catch the tea? <laughs> I'm not calling me out on it. I've been hearing that turmeric is really good for like practically everything. My vision checked up. Go get some turmeric, girl. Like, I got the gap. Go get some turmeric. Turmeric can fix practically anything. Mm-hmm. I've been hearing that. But in my studies, if you have inflammation, um, turmeric and saffron, S-A-F-F-R-O-N, supplements can be good if you have the Dutch, the um, inflammation like I do. So I think I'm going to get some turmeric. And I don't know about the fish oil pill. I'm not including no, no fish oil supplements. But um, lastly, everywhere that I was on psychology today, time.com, harvard.edu. Um, what else I was on psychiatric times. Everybody was saying that the Mediterranean diet is the easiest diet to follow. So I was like, okay, well look, if I can still drink with this diet, then sure. Let me go see. Um, the diet by default, um, removes a lot of, um, processed foods, because with the Mediterranean diet, you cook with olive oil instead of canola or vegetable oil. So, and olive oil has a lot of nutrients in it um, when you get it organic. And what is it called? Virgin? Sure. Uh, uh, olive oil, I'd be real confused. That's why I'm trying to get on. I'm studying the Mediterranean diet. Okay. Um, the Mediterranean diet, they allow poultry and fish two to three times a week. Yep. A lot of vegetables by default in their diet and um, add some fruits. But I was on the Mayo Clinic on YouTube. They're a popular um, medical group. And they were saying, like, with the Mediterranean diet, you only have red meat like twice a month. Mm-hmm. Is that something the girls can agree to? I'm like, I don't eat like steaks and stuff like that. See, I just had a steak last night, so I don't, girl. Okay. Well, the girl but it also includes hamburger. Yeah, no hamburger. Oh, wow. Yeah. See how fucked, see how fucked it again? <laughs> I'm like, because I don't know. I'm like, mm, I love me a good old chicken, girl. And I love me a good fish. You can cook fish a whole lot of ways, but. Mm. Mm, yeah. yeah the Mediterranean. I'm, I, I'm still studying it. But it's tell- <laughs> no it's, bacon. It's tell- it's the no best bacon. diet if you got depression. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. No high fats. So, taking bacon out your life. Per Dr. George Bailey. Yeah, so right. your brain, your diet, and depression. Fix so you, your diet, and that can affect your depression. Okay. So you're just going to throw that in the, in the garbage at this point because... <laughs> no, I'm not. I can look at it. Everything in um, portions or everything in something. Moderation? There we go. That big word. Okay. <laughs> this week in sexual health, welcome to our casting couch. Um, 
I am going to talk about sexual transmutation. Sexual, transmu sexual transmutation is converting and redirecting your mental energy from meaningless sex or masturbation. Ooh. Taking a lower energy and transferring it to a higher energy. And no, we are not talking about no fat. No shade. You said masturbation, so I'm confused. That's why I got lost. Okay, I'm tuned in. Come on. I also said meaningless sex. Oh. So, uh, one of the points on here, I'm going to talk. I'm going to directly check meaningless sex. Come on. Um. So I think it's an important topic in sexual health because uh, a lot of us engage in meaningless sex or masturbation that we just don't need to be doing, and we could be doing something fucking else. Um, so the first point is to take an inventory of what you really want out of the day and or week and make a checklist and you do not get sex. You do not get to masturbate until you are making positive strides on that checklist, because if you are not making positive strides on that checklist, you do not deserve the reward of oh. Sex or mm -hmm. masturbation because you ain't doing shit. You ain't got shit done. Oh. What you need some dick for? You don't need no ass. Oh, you ain't do shit. That's a strong proclamation. You gonna turn that into law in Tennessee? Uh, <laughs> Tennessee is already lost. I'm sorry about that. And we got meth induced alligators. <laughs> I'm so, confused. Mm, anyway, uh, <laughs> next question. Um, next, think about the lover or partner that you really want. Would you be better off not fucking that thought from Jacked? Would you be better off not desensitizing yourself to masturbation or porn when thinking about that lover or partner that you want? So a lot of times there's a big issue going on where um, people get desensitized to porn or to masturbation because that's all they've, they've been used to is, uh, well, I watch, you know, 20 porn flicks and that's how I get my nuts. When Pornhub 2 coming out. I'm like, Pornhub 2? Y'all be watching too much porn. It's a lot of porn. You didn't saw all the porn on Pornhub already? <laughs> anyway, different subject. Um, but it's a real it's a real thing where um, people are desensitized to porn, um, to masturbation, to actual sex with other people because they've been doing the jacking off and the porn thing too much and so to stop yourself from desensitizing you can sexually transmute some of that energy and some of that time into something else where you're not desensitizing yourself you're not wasting your time um doing something that you think will make you feel better for right now but will only damage you in the long run so think about that future lover or partner that you could be fucking up your chances with by jacking off four times a day. Ooh. Oh, that's the real thing. Y'all have a lot of time. You need well, to sometimes they don't have a lot of time. Sometimes they, they get it done in five minutes. Oh. But so think oh. about... Oh, right. So think about jacking off... The, the person that's jacking off uh, four times a day, they nut in five minutes. How is this going to translate in a relationship with your next lover or partner? One, they're not going to want to have sex with you four times a day. That's not realistic. And if you are nothing... Thank you. That, yeah, yeah, tell her. Okay. I'm not having sex with you four times a day. <laughs> I'm not. I'm definitely not. Um, And so, also, if you're nothing in five minutes, that's Wasting a problem. Wasting my time. That's also a I gotta problem. I got to clean up for this. That's a problem. And if you also take in five hours to nut, that is also a problem because you are so desensitized... To actual sex that um, you know when you do have regular sex you can go for five hours because it's not the same thing that you typically get when you jack off so again that's where sexual transmutation comes into play where you can just put some of that energy elsewhere and not fuck up your sex drive and your sexual lifestyle before you get into these relationships that everybody's talking about they want to be in Mm. Uh, next is sex a higher priority than vibrating higher or getting richer in money, education, or relationships. Come on. If it's n if it's on the same tier as money, education, and relationships, 
then by all means continue to do everything that you're already doing. But if it's not, if money, education, and relationships are more important, then make that more important. Because it's more important. Um, so you shouldn't be trying to, you know, squeeze in this extra nut and then fucking up your relationship. Or squeeze in this extra nut and now you fucked up this two hundred dollar deal that you was gonna get or uh, fucking with your hours at work Now you're not getting paid as much Because you had to get the extra nuts before you went to work Is money more important Or is it not Is education more important Or is it not Are relationships more important Or are they not um, And last but not least Like I said I'm, I'm going to reinforce This is not I'm not in, endorsing no fat Because I don't believe in no fat at all But I do believe that Making better use of your time Um and energy is extremely important And if you can put some of that time and energy Into other things than fucking Meaningless people People that are not going to have anything To add to your life Or your story Or meaningless Jack off sessions Then don't, do something else Sexual transmutation That is sexual health this week What is the song for Your soul Keep your empty boxes, your lying boxes, your cheating on me boxes. I can't take no more. Those, I promise you boxes. I'm in love with you boxes. So empty, so empty. Everything you said to me, you don't mean. So take your empty boxes. Um, by Tamar Braxton. Oh, okay. From her album Bluebird of Happiness It was the last track on the album That's why I didn't hear it But it was so <laughs> This led to a divorce Those empty boxes Those um, I paid my taxes this year boxes Those <laughs> You know like Vince to cut through it Vince led her to believe that every box was checked Every box was full And all them boxes was fucking empty so I was like, "Woo, I feel you, girl." <laughs> Especially knowing her truth, those "I love you," those "I won't do it again," all those boxes that you're trying to check and fill up, them boxes was empty, hmm. and she she wasn't here for it. Apparently, <laughs> so and she's and she's not here for it at all right now because he's single out here. <laughs> empty boxes, but she got she on her second boyfriend already, ain't she? Uh, don't be calling her no hussy. I heard the word hussy in that sentence. Okay. My song for my soul is a classic. So um, empty boxes is not a classic. No, <laughs> unfortunately not. I I'm, I am so sorry, baby. To... That's on the deep cuts. You got a wow. The third album, the last track. Wow. Okay. It is from another Braxton. Mm. This song is 16 years old this week. And it changed my whole gay life. 16 years ago, this album, this self titled album came out, and this amazing song was on it. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna try to pull my edges together. If you could give me one good reason why I should believe you, <laughs> believe in all the things that you tell, mm-hmm. my heart. Wants to receive you Just make me know That you are sincere Mm -hmm. You know I'd love for you to lead me And follow through completely Come on empty boxes (laughs) (laughs) So why don't you give me all that I ask And if You give your very best To bring me happiness Bluebird of happiness Mm -hmm. I'll show you just how much I adore you Cause you mean the world to me You are my every Thing. I swear the only thing that matters matters to me. Oh, baby, 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 baby. Ooh, the dick. Because <laughs> you mean so much Ooh. to me. Ooh, it's getting warm. <laughs> I won't go further than that. <laughs> um, Look, she spoke a word. I know. That's why this is off of my soul this week. And she was by the pool in her jeans. You mean the world to me by Tony Braxton. Come on out. Um, turned 16 this week. You mean the world to me. You are my everything. 
everything in the other thing uh-huh. matters to me. Oh, baby, 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 baby. You can get these vocals at our live show um, on. on August 24th at Boxers <laughs> in Hell's Kitchen at Come 5 on. p.m. Baby, baby, we will continue baby, this rendition. Uh, but it is a song for my soul. This week as well because um, it is transformative. It is a succinct body of work by Tony Michelle the motherfucking Braxton. Live a legend. Um, and it's still one of my favorite R&B albums of all times. And one of my very favorite singles from an R&B album. And um, you do mean the world to me. Every last one of you. Thank you guys so much. Quit being gay. <laughs> what are you here for this week? It is about to be a lot. American Airlines. American Airlines. Huh. If you could come to the, the front of the congregation, please, I would. Come here. I have a couple words to say to you. Come here, man. Come here. Um, and it's not about the candy that you were eating or about you falling asleep in the back of the church. This is about. If I want to wear my motherfucking romper oh. on a flight from Jamaica, <laughs> I am going to wear my motherfucking romper on a flight from Jamaica to the United States of fucking America. And you have me fucked up if you think that it is just it's inappropriate because my ass is too big, my hips are too wide, or my titties are too big, and you just feel uncomfortable. Then, bitch... Y'all feel uncomfortable because I am going to wear my romper on this flight from hot ass, black ass, motherfucking Jamaica back to goddamn Texas. And I want in the middle of July, I want you hoes. <laughs> I want July. you hoes to say something to me because I am ready to drag you across all the social media. And my lawyer is on retainer. Bitch, I am ready. So in case you are. In the middle Unclear. of July. I'm absolutely not here for it. <laughs> I'm not here for it. I'm not here for it. Uh, the story that I'm talking about is about one Dr. Tisha Rowe uh, coming back on a flight from Jamaica on an American Airlines flight where she and her baby was kicked off the flight because she was quote unquote inappropriately dressed in a romper that covered her parts. It all of her parts. parts. Nothing. It wasn't a titty hanging out. She didn't have like a little butt crack hanging out. Uh, it it was as short as shorts are supposed to be. It was a midriff, um, covering up all of her it's titties. It's July in Jamaica. It's all of the colors. <laughs> it's it's pretty. We three. And three. she got a big ass bag on to cover up anything that might slip out. If anything does slip out, but the white the hmm. Anglo Saxon maybe is that the right word y'all be using? <sighs> People were so, I guess, afraid of her her female form mm. that Make all of this ass and all of this titties just had to be inappropriate no matter how it was dressed and how it was framed. If you are unaware of the story, please look up American Airlines kicked a woman off her flight. Uh, it was covered by The New Yorker. Again, her name is Dr. Tisha Rowe. Uh, she is also a, a family physician. And she took to uh, the CNN and the MSNBC the next day Plant to tell forms. them uh, she was not having the shit. And she didn't give a fuck if they gave her a goddamn... Um, uh, they gave her a... A, a gift card. A, basically, a, yeah. Um, a gift credit. card a credit for her next flight. And um, she Let's said, that's that's year. not that's not enough. If um, my baby did something fucked up at school, I'm not her just... Her baby going. was crying. Mama, why do we have to get off the plane? I am a doctor. I went to school to become the best woman I could so I could take my child to Jamaica. And y'all gonna embarrass me like this? She was not. She's not accepting just the credit. She needs no. American Airlines to learn a lesson, is what she said in the interview. They need to learn a lesson from this. And the lesson is, do not be afraid of black, black bodies. Do not be afraid of black women and their features. And me wearing a romper should not be a big issue for you to kick me off this international-ass goddamn flight that I paid for. In the middle of July, <laughs> I mean, y'all just don't look. Y'all already. Did you want her to be in a fucking onesie snowsuit? <laughs> what? 
what did, what was she supposed to be wearing? It's uh, what? because when Becky wear this shit, because I see Becky get on these same goddamn flights every time that I go to and from Jamaica. They don't be here. No one on. has a mm, no one has a question, comment, or concern. But because this be girl with big ass hit, well, <laughs> I do be concerned. Bacteria. No one has a <laughs> germs. No one has a verbal <laughs> concern uh, about it. Mm. But and they, she definitely don't get kicked off the plane. But because this girl has a big bust line, a big waist, and a big ass and thick thighs, it's now inappropriate. Excuse me? Huh? Y'all can get the fuck out of here. I'm not here for it. Period. <laughs> I was just like, because I'm like, let the space, child. Okay, so I'm about to go on a rant. I don't have a prepared note for my here for it, but I do have a rant. So here it goes. So, I was in Fireplace a few weeks ago, and I had an encounter with a bottom. And, you know, I've been trying to let that encounter <laughs> go. We have all had encounters with bottoms in Fireplace. <laughs> well, you know, the three girls got stabbed down to the fireplace as well. DC is <laughs> acting up. Okay. Twilight Tuesday's council, they stab the girls down to the fireplace. Brixton is like, y'all are on notice. Um, but apparently... On Facebook, July 16th, 2017, was my first time at, um... Fireplace? Nope. Uh... Da, 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 da. I don't know where I was. <laughs> but I was at the club, okay? Okay. <laughs> and so, I posted to my Facebook, July 16th, 2017, at 2.44 a.m. I'm in the club, updating my Facebook. Imagine me. I'm not focused. I just want to note it that I was in the corner, quiet and observing, when another bottom approached me and asked me what was my problem. Therefore, I had to let her know that I'm from Memphis. I like and I like to fight before she backed that ass up. I don't know what shade what the shade was, but I'm clearly built to handle whatever the resolution needs to be. And also and so I also had was this like a month ago? Yeah, I was in um, the fireplace with you um, in a, a third party, and we were. Um, I think either I think the third party was asking me, so you don't like the club, and I was like, you know, well, I just don't really like how. And before I could get my answer out, this bottom turns around at the bar. It's like, well, if you don't want to be here, you shouldn't be here. Oh, wow. Hello. I am talking to my friend who is over here standing next to me. You are sitting here. I've learned later that she was sitting there with her husband. So, girl, your focus should not be on me. Maybe I was a threat because I'm clearly a bottom the way I present. Um, you, If you're sitting at the bar with your husband and y'all are having date night or couple night or, girl, if you're trying to add a second date night to the to the itinerary this week, why somebody is behind you talking to a person behind you, you should not turn around and involve yourself in their conversation. We weren't talking about you. I hadn't even eyeballed you or your man. <laughs> so uh, what are y'all doing? Why do I keep on having to be um, this person attacked uh, with who I am and the way I present and the energy I'm giving off, I'm not bothering anybody. I was in the same space, standing up against the wall. Standing in need of prayer. Standing against the wall, this person turns around and gets in my face. Well, if you don't want to be here, why you don't want to be here? I just don't like his attitude. And so and so, so and so, so and so. And then got out of his chair and started getting in my face. And so I started petitioning his husband. I'm like, your spouse is out of his chair and in my face. You need to get your spouse. I don't know what y'all bottoms going through. I know I'm 6'1", 200, and fine. But girl, I don't want your man. I don't want you. And I y leave me the hell alone when y'all see me in these clubs if that's the energy you got to give. Because first and foremost, if I start acting up, and these Superman gonna start acting up. Everybody with me gonna start acting up because I roll with real bitches. I don't know what y'all are doing. I don't know what kind of game you think this is. And I'm sick. DC is already having a hot girl summer. <laughs> DC is having a Memphis summer. And I'm trying my best 
to not contribute to those activities, leave me alone if that's the energy that you're on. When you see me on 824 in New York City, I'm celebrating my birthday. And if you have any problem with the way I present, don't pick that to be the time. That ain't going to be the right time. We got bill money. (laughs) So, I just, why, as women, (laughs) LOL, why are we approaching each other with this negative energy when the other girl is not aggressive in your face? I was... As my Facebook post said, in 2017 at 2.44 a.m., I was standing over in the corner quiet and observing when another bottom approached me and asked me what my problem was. I was in fireplace last month, standing up against the wall, not bothering nobody, and another bottom turned around and, well, if you don't want to be here, you you shouldn't be here. First and foremost, girl, if you want to keep... mm, I don't, I'm not going to give my reads out Because I don't want y'all having a, t- a sample of what the reads going to be Leave me alone um, And my cash app is uh, Dollar sign Rona Matters If you have a donation to give Well um, I'm trying to keep I'm trying to keep DC from having a Memphis hot girl summer Because the, the, the hot girl summer Y'all think y'all having Y'all can have a compl- DC can have a completely different hot girl summer Shout out to our last episode titled "High Girl Summer," but shout out to you, you're a terrorist. I'm not here for it. All this energy in the room, move it around. You're a terrorist now. <laughs> I'm making threats. <laughs> you make I'm making threats you in make the media. Te- That's what the police are gonna charge you with. Um, uh, <coughs> ice come and get me, girl. Actually, don't say that. <laughs> <coughs> I'm Dominican. We can't do that. Um, it has come to our favorite part of the episode it is our last call um if you are unfamiliar with our episode or unfamiliar with uh how we do shit make sure you pour yourself a shot this is our last call and we are about to get crunk or not <laughs> i think i remade thinking about it my last call this week is to the woman that um pushed past security and pushed Father Marcelo <laughs> Rossi. The Catholic Church thing. I was like, stage. I don't know who he is or what's going on, but I'm here for it. <laughs> He's a highly homophobic uh, Catholic priest uh, that has said uh, a whole bunch of spicy Dumb shit, shit. Uh, against homosexuality, um, against gay marriage. Uh, he was in front of 50,000 attendees giving his little sermon. And um, homegirl had a big face pass or accomplice. <laughs> Nurse Jackie was there that day. Yes, my good sis yeah, was girl like, a big pass. I have time and energy. I need stage access. She pushed this nigga <laughs> the fuck off the stage. Um, he has made numerous anti gay statements throughout his career to include a lot of ideas, quote. A lot of ideas will change the day homosexuality is proven to be an illness. Mm. I don't like a chick now. Also, <laughs> quote, sex between man causes pain. If something causes pain, it can't be a good thing, end quote. He is also How opposed. How do you know what causes pain? Mm, he is also <laughs> opposed same-sex marriage because, quote, the word of God is clear that man and woman were created to unite and bear fruit. So I am absolutely here for his punk ass getting pushed off pushed off a stage. I wish that he would have broken something. Unfortunately, he did not. He um <clears throat> was able to get back on the stage and continue the sermon about ten minutes later. But um, watching the video gave me a lot of happiness because she should have been pushing him into the pits of hell. And after she pushed him, she took like two or three steps forward and looked down. She was like. Hmm, is he still there? Okay, <laughs> I was like, she wanted to deliver that elbow. Like if you watch wrestling from <laughs> from the from the nineties, the early two thousands, they would push somebody down and then they would jump down and throw the elbow on top of their ass to make sure they was out. She wanted to throw the elbow. When she took them extra two or three steps to make sure he was down, that's the part that took me. Out. I was like, oh wow, she went up and pushed him, and then she was like, uh uh uh, and then she looked over the canyon. I mean, the little stage area to the little floor. She was like, mm, is he still there? <laughs> I was gonna drop a leg on him. <laughs> So I'm absolutely here for it. That is my last call. <laughs> um, Pentecostal minister Ruben Diaz Sr. is the longest 
running a Republican person in like the Senate or the Council. Uh, he he has s- a what? I don't know who he. I don't know. Look, I just discovered this ten minutes ago. Okay. <laughs> Tbh. But he has some competition now because gay New York City Councilman Richie Torres has announced a bid for Congress down to the Bronx. The black, the black guy. So, um, yeah. So, what are y'all doing? Y'all better get down here and elect um, gay NYC Councilman Richie Torres, who will. Oh no, it says. I'm reading this wrong. Richie Torres, a 31 year old gay Puerto. Black Puerto Rican New York City Councilman has announced his bid for the Bronx congressional seat soon to be vacated by Representative Jose Serrano, who is the longest running Hispanic representative. Um, This Pentecostal minister is also being seen as one of his um, biggest competitors because he has a big old Pentecostal church behind him. You know what religion did for Prop 8. So they fought that and fought that and fought that. So... But to be clear, so there is a a black gay Puerto man, Rican. Mm-hmm. a Puerto Ri- is he Puerto Rican? Black Puerto Rican. Oh, the picture I okay. saw he he looked he looked black black. I didn't see Puerto Rican, but okay, all right. <laughs> um, a black or a person of color uh-huh. that is also a gay man running for a council seat in New York that y'all should be voting for, especially in the Bronx, because I know the goddamn the Pentecostal minister Ruben Diaz Senior ain't gonna give AOC <laughs> a friend. She needs he ain't going to get a, the citizens of the Bronx, of, the Bronx a friend either. No, I'm saying if, I agree, if we I'm elect him, mm-hmm. AOC will have a friend. Yeah. The squad will have a fifth, uh, have a boy member. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> that is this week's episode of Here For It Podcast. Thank you guys so much for tuning in again. Make sure you tune in next week. We will um, be back fresh from the beach. We're going back to the beach again this weekend, and uh, we will have more colorful commentary. If you would like to see us, make sure you stay tuned to our Instagram, where we will be unveiling the details for our pop-up in New York. If you are in New York and you want to see us, make sure you get over to our Instagram again, like I said, here for a podcast. Uh, We will be there August 24th at Boxers at 5 p.m., Boxers in Hell's Kitchen. And we'll have some giveaways, and we're gonna be kissing and shaking hands and maybe sucking some dick. You don't know. Whoa, public indecency. My friend had been elected yet. I don't know if he's gonna be able to get me out. <laughs> then it's gonna be a Saturday. Maybe. We'll see. Maybe. I am the I, Superman. I want to go first. Let the bottle go first. Wow, aggressive energy. I am Ronald Matters. Follow me on the internet at Ronald Matters, and of course, RonaldMatters.com. I am the Superman, T-H-E-E-S-U-P-A-M-A-N. Make sure that you take your Truvada and protect Beyonce's legacy. Bye.